I would just say, go for it. Don't just do it. Put a bit of thought in. Be a thoughtful leader and reflect, but not too long. And then just do it. This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good morning, good morning, Mindy Gibbons Klein. Previously, episode 176 of the 12 minute convos. The last time we spoke, it was two years, nine months, 18 hours ago. Life is precious and life can be short and unpredictable. Just appreciate what you've got, be grateful, just really live each day. I'm aiming to do that each and every day, and I hope everybody feels inspired to do the same that was then this is now mindy it's a great pleasure to reconnect with you how are you doing i'm doing really well thanks so much for uh, having another chat with me angel yeah it's my pleasure now when we did have our first conversation the word that came up first was tenacity are you still living around that word well, funny enough, I haven't thought about that word for a long time. I think it's just part of my DNA. I'm quite tenacious, persistent, whatever you want to call it, determined. I do think the energy around it has changed. So whereas many people will picture tenacity as something a bit fierce, a little bit hard-edged, it doesn't need to be that way. And I'm approaching everything and life in general with a sense of calm and just enjoying, but still just as determined as ever, if that makes any sense. Tell me, I open up more. Is it the concept of uh, I do not need to work as hard as I thought I needed to work to produce things? Or is it more of a calm type of format? Yeah, I think it starts inside. A lot of people talk about living from the inside out and doing things from the inside out. And that's what it is. I check in with myself every day, every morning and several times during the day. But it's just there now. I've trained myself to be calm and confident instead of, you know, energy fizzing all over the place and perhaps, you know, scattering it everywhere. Also, I'm, you know, a little bit older now, as we all are. <laughs> How do you look at your younger self from the perspective of being older now? I think I didn't get it. Everybody says it's about people, not tasks. And I thought, yes, yes, I love people. Uh, but you really do need to think about people and relationships first. And you have to learn that what well, you have to. I mean, some people, maybe they never do. But I've been learning that all along and it's kind of evolved. And I think that's the big difference is uh, I just couldn't. I was so focused on achieving things. And I had to, when you're in your twenties, thirties, you know, you're trying to achieve stuff. You're trying to build something and, you know, wanted to get a house and wanted to have a relationship. And so once you do all those things, um, you can kind of relax a bit. Then you realize that, you know, there's different ways to achieve, not just striving, striving, striving. Mm. I think it's like uh, the chicken and the egg scenario, which comes first. I think the work comes first. And I'm saying this strictly reflecting in a because I was like through the podcast, like when we were on the journey across the United States, I mm. had to listen to conversations to prepare for the people I would meet. Right. And uh, there was a part of me that got healing in the concept of understanding that the younger me was good enough. Mm. It took me a bit, but the younger man was taking care of the older man because I was listening to these conversations. I couldn't remember them. Right. I could remember everyone. But the younger man in recording these conversations took care of the older man. Have you seen that experience as well? Do you know what, Angel? I don't really think in terms of age anymore. Mm. I am working with a lot of young people in my work now by choice. So I have engineered my life to work with and play with people of all different ages so I don't think there's like a younger me and a, it's just a continuous journey mm. um yeah I, I like being with young people but I also believe that well there's things we can teach each other I get asked to speak in schools about things like being good enough funny enough mm -hmm. and that's a real pleasure for me to help young people have confidence earlier on in their lives. Uh, but for me personally, no, I don't think of my age at all. Hmm. 
I'm 106. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we spoke, you wrote The Thoughtful Leader. And mm. amongst that, you were helping others write books as well. Where are you in that space? Oh, well, my book businesses just keep going from strength to strength. So the book Midwife is a really successful brand now. We've helped over a thousand people to plan and write their books in 90 days. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We've won and been finalists for 18 awards, and it's very rewarding. And then the publishing company is doing amazing things. And we've had, you know, dozens of bestsellers and awards and really great press coverage. We have clients on the TV. We have, you know, international deals, translation deals. Um, it's all the work, hard work, whatever you want to call it, over 17 years, just always keeping on the same path. So that's mm -hmm. great. But the thoughtful leader has allowed me to step into this speaking role and talk about important things. Being thoughtful is probably the key thing that if I could only ever do one thing for the rest of my life, it would be writing and speaking and helping people understand how to be more thoughtful in both senses of the word. And I've just recorded the audiobook version of The Thoughtful Leader. So we're going to have another version to, you know, now that people love audio so much. Now, there's so many other books that you have written. And I don't say it like the others are just the building block, right? It's like great books that you have written. Is there like a one place, a one location we can go to find out more about you? Uh, MindyGK.com. <laughs> MindyGK.com is my speaker website. And I try to put everything there in one place because we have so many social media platforms and profiles and you know, it's great to have a lot of coverage, but like you say, you never know where to find people and their stuff. So thank yeah. you for asking. Yeah, sure, sure. Having teachers, coaches, and mentors around you is something you ensured you had. Is that something you still invest in? I do. And there are lots of different ways to do it. I have many, many talented colleagues. And so we do mastermind, masterminding of various kinds where you know, you have something to offer them. They have something to offer you. You get to bounce ideas around with people who are really intelligent. So I do a lot of that as well. I do a lot of giving back and always making sure that I ask myself, am I staying open to new ideas? Because you think, OK, I've achieved this point, but you've never got there. Even You've never got there, you know, if it were a destination. <laughs> so, yeah, that's important. I love the way you said that they are there. Uh, there. Uh, <laughs> the two boys that were in the mix, oh my, how has what you've been doing impacted them? I remember you said one is more on the science side, one on mm -hmm. the art side. How's that going? Yeah, they are living the dream. They're living their lives. As we speak, I'm currently in London and one is in Australia, about as far away as he can be, doing a six-month gap year. I guess it's a half year. Mm. Uh, traveling around, backpacking, and learning a lot, and had organized it all himself, paid for it all before he applies to med school. He wanted to get that trip, because I think it's kind of hard once you're, you know, if you're med medical school. Mm. And the other is living the dream in the other direction. He's in Utah. He's performing for seven months in three productions. So all of his dance and drama training and singing is all coming together and we'll get to see him later this month. So yeah, if we want to do a family Skype call or we did a Zoom call the other day, it has to be 8 a.m. in London, <laughs> nighttime in Australia and the night before in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing how those seeds have grown uh, and it's fascinating as well how you were able to identify within your children where they would be today by who they were then. That's pretty amazing as well. They identified it. We just tried to be as supportive as possible as their parents and you just never really know how the kids will turn out. And I, I'm really proud that my husband and myself were, you know, watching, listening and supporting all the way along. It was tricky especially with, you know, the son who wanted to be in the performing arts, didn't want to go to university or even do the A-levels, if you know what they are. Yes. It's like, really, okay, don't you want to have a plan B? And his answer was no. <laughs> yeah, it's like, give it all up. Let's live for the arts alone. Yeah, oh, well. I'm sure that he <laughs> loves the fact that you've inputted that. It's one of those things you look back in hindsight and say, oh, thank you, mommy and daddy. 
Oh, no, no, they already do. I mean, it's really great, you know, and I'm grateful to them as well, because, you know, of course, we had preconceived ideas. You can't help it. You have expectations. And then if you're smart, you recognize you have expectations and try to step back and try not to control, well, anybody, but especially your kids, because, you know, it's impossible to control other people anyway. And if you ease off, then they are allowed to spread their wings. Mm. The concept of life is precious. Life mm can be short love each day you ended our conversation with those words a couple of oh, years wow. ago and it's again fascinating that you delved into developing that concept you said that you are mindful and you check in mm. uh, at least a couple of times per day do you have any regrets when you look back over the time in the no um i guess just wished i'd done certain things sooner um soon after we spoke book. Uh, I did my first TEDx talk and I was so worried about it. And it is a big thing, you know, everybody builds it up, but, you know, there was so much fear around it. And then that has been another turning point. So that's just consolidated things. But, you know, I, I waited and waited and waited and I guess with other things as well, but that one stands out. Mm. I built it up in my mind as this big obstacle, this big challenge. And yes, it's important but I didn't have it in perspective. I think the new me, if there is a new me, you know, it is just trying to keep things in perspective and not waste a lot of time with fear. Mm, I love that fear, fierceness, or <laughs> tenacity. So many great words, Mindy. I want to say thank you so much for what you've done by being true to your own unique real self, your own unique real strengths. It's really, really, really a grand opportunity to check in after two years, nine months and 18 hours and to <laughs> hear uh, that you are continuing with what you desire. It's really, really a grand opportunity for my heirs, my life and my family and those listeners, amazing audience out there. I mean, they, before, we leave is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience i would just say go for it i mean nike says just do it don't just do it put a bit of thought in be a thoughtful leader and reflect but not too long and then just do it <laughs> mm. mindy gibbon clients again my friend a pleasure i treasure thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 minute convos with angel jones this podcast is produced by Pod Edits. Visit podedits.com for professional podcast publishing.